hello, this is uh, chapter 9, video 3, and it goes with section 9.3 in your book. And this is going to talk about the surface area of cylinders. So the target is obviously going to be finding the surface area of a cylinder. So cylinder is our only real vocab here. It's a 3D shape with a circular base, right? So you have some pictures here. Think of um, like a can of soup right? If you had that can of soup, it has a top circle, a bottom circle, and then this label part that wraps around. And just like with prisms, this side, right, the sides that wrap around here, we call the lateral surface. So think of the label of the can of soup. If you unrolled that or unfolded that from the can, that's a rectangle and that would be your lateral face. Okay, so you have circles for bases, two identical circles, congruent circles on the top and the bottom, and then a rectangle here that actually makes the label of your can of soup or the lateral face. So I actually want to talk about this picture a bit more because, so again, this is our flat pattern or our, our net, we call it, and it helps us see all the parts of our cylinder kind of unfolded. Okay, so we have a, a circle on the top and the bottom right? Circle on the top and the bottom of the can. So I know I'm going to have two of those. They also remind me here that the circumference of this circle is pi r squared. We would call that diameter times pi, right? To find the circumference of this circle. Well, if I think about the label of my can of soup, if I unroll it, this length on my rectangle here, Right, the length of my rectangle here is going to be equal to this circumference of wrapping around the can. So I know that this rectangle has 2 pi r, or diameter times pi, to be the length. And then the height of the can is my other dimension here. Right, So this rectangle would be length times the height, where the length is the circumference of the circle. Okay, And then we also know that we have area of a circle. And we learned that earlier in the chapter, pi r squared or radius times radius times pi. Okay, so we're going to use area of a circle and area of a rectangle and add those three parts together to get the total surface area of any cylinder. So I know that might feel like a lot, but let's do a couple examples together. Okay, so first it says draw the net or the flat pattern, and then we're going to find the surface area for these cylinders. So I like my flat patterns for cylinders to always look like kind of division signs. Okay, there's my circle on the top and the bottom, and then my label kind of unfolded like that to look like um, a rectangle. So then let's put in what we know. We know the radius of these circles is 7. We know the height of the rectangle is 11. And we know that this distance here would be the circumference of the circle, which is diameter times pi, so 14 times pi. Okay, and let's label this also. The area of these circles is going to be my radius, right? Radius times radius times pi, so 7 times 7 times 3.14. Okay, so now let's put all of those pieces together. Okay, I'm going to switch colors so you can see where I'm at. Let's type it into our calculator. Okay, so I did 7 times 7 times pi here and got 153.86. And I know I have two of those, right? So there's my two circles. Plus this rectangle, which is going to be 14 times pi times 11. And I get 483.56. And if I add those all together, I come up with this. You can check me. Should be that. And we're talking about an area, so meter squared. Okay, so let's try one more here. We'll draw the flat pattern first. Circle on the top, rectangle, circle on the bottom. Kind of like a division sign, right? So now I'm going to label the radius of my circle here as 4. These circles are going to match. And the height of my label on my can here, if I stood it up like a can, would be 10. And then I can also find my circumference of this circle would be diameter times pi. So 8 times pi, I can find that real quick. Okay, so there's my circumference. 
So now I have to find my three pieces and add them together. So I'm just going to get my calculator. I know the area of these circles here, the top and the bottom, are going to be 4 times 4 times pi. So each one of those is 50.24. And I've got two of them. And then my rectangle here is going to be my circumference, 25.12 times 10. 251.2. And then add all three of those up. So I'm going to pause and type those in. Okay, so I added 50, 50, and the 251 here. Those three pieces together gave me this, square meters. Okay, so let's talk about a formula, right? We might not want to draw this flat pattern every time, but if we use that to help us with the formula, we can do it a lot easier, even if we don't have a picture to work with, okay? So here's our circle bases. They're showing me that the area... Right, I could find the area of these two circle bases. That would be pi r squared for each of those. So 2 times pi r squared are the two circles. Plus, and then the area of this rectangle, remember, is the circumference, which is diameter times pi times the height. So... You can either say 2 pi r, or you can say diameter times r. Okay, so just thinking about it's two of the areas of the circle plus the label or the rectangle here. And that picture will help you remember the parts. Okay, so either draw the flat pattern or just use the formula. Think about, okay, let me find two of these circles, and then let me find the label and add all three pieces together. Let me find two of these circles and then the label and then add all three pieces together. So I want you to pause and do these three examples here and then hit play when you have a final answer for those, okay? Show all your work on here. Okay, you should have paused and worked these practice ones out, but let's go through them. So I like to show my work finding the area of the circles first. I know my radius was 7, so each of those circles is going to have an area 7 times 7 times pi, and there are two of them. So that gave me both circles. And then the rectangle is my circumference, right? So diameter times pi, and then it has a height of 4. So this is the area of the rectangular label. And if I add that all up here, I get this answer. Okay. Number 2. Again, the area of the circle. Here's my radius, 3 times 3 times pi, and there are two of those. So this is both circles. And then the label here would be circumference, so diameter times pi, times this height, times 8, and then add these together to get your total. And then my final one here in this row, again the circle, 9 times 9 times pi, and there are two of those. And then circumference, diameter times pi, times this height of 6, and add it up and get a total there. All right, make sure they're all labeled square feet. Okay. All right, and then the last one here, example two, says find the lateral surface area. Well, these ones are actually easier. Lateral surface area, think just the rectangle. Okay, so just the label part of the can of soup. Not the lid, not the top or the bottom. Right? So for this rectangle, we know that the length of it is the circumference of your circle, because this would wrap all the way around your circle if it was the label on your can, multiplied by the height. Right? All right, so let's try one, and then you can do the last one. So this one I know my circumference is going to be a diameter of 6. So circumference is going to be 6 times pi. And then my rectangle there is going to be my circumference, 18.84, times the height here of 18. And I get an answer of 339.12. And this is centimeters squared. Okay. So you've got one more to do here. Remember, we just want the lateral surface area. So that means just this label going around the outside, which would unfold into our rectangle there. So just do this one and then uh, pause while you work and then play when you're ready to check. 
Okay, here's what I got for a final answer here. I did my circumference, right? 12 times pi times the height of 9. So that's your video on finding surface area of a circumference.